Today I'm showing you the content discovery system I built in Obsidian to defend against distraction. Let me show you how it works. I find a YouTube video that grabs my attention. Inside Obsidian, I use Quick Add to capture it. No complex note creation, just the essentials. The discovery lands in my review queue. Then during my daily or weekly review, I filter the signals from the noise. Let me show you how the new content discovery system looks like inside of Obsidian. So over here on YouTube, I've found a video, how to give Claude unlimited memory without writing code. So this video has caught my attention. So I don't have time at the moment to watch the video or find out whether there's anything useful in there. So I'm just going to copy the title by selecting my hotkey control C. This could be Command C on a Mac. I'm going to use my hotkey in Obsidian, which is Alt C, to launch my new discovery quick add template. Then I just paste in the name of the video, take out the special character, select OK. And now it wants to know what the URL is. So I'll jump back over to my web browser, Control C to get the YouTube URL. Paste that in. By default, it selects YouTube video, but I could select any medium type from a predefined list that I specify. Then the content purpose. So this one would probably be a tool or a resource or a learning tutorial. So it doesn't matter too much, just pick one. Then there's a little question, what's the hook? So what got your attention with this video? So if we have a look at this one, the thing that got my attention was give Claude unlimited memory because all AI tools don't have unlimited memory. So we'll use that one as the hook and then we're just going to hit submit and that's it, we've captured our new discovery. So we don't need to review it straight away, we just need to capture it. So let's do another one. This time we'll head over to the Obsidian MD Reddit and we've got one here, Vaults Showcase, my journal vault for journals I've kept for over 15 years. I'm just gonna control C to copy the title, Alt C to launch my quick ad. Paste the title, take out the colon and the full stop, hit OK. Then it wants the URL, so I'll copy and paste the Reddit URL. This time we select Reddit. And what's the hook? Well, this one is a vault showcase and the hook is a journal vault showcase. So we'll submit that. Now we've got that one as a new discovery. Let's do another one. Go back to YouTube. This time we've got a video from Daniel Owen. The RAM apocalypse is now. What should you do? We'll copy the title on that one. This time I'm going to control P, type in discovery, and you can see my quick add command there with my hotkey. So that's what I'm using. So I select that one, paste in my title, take out the exclamation mark and the question mark, select OK. It's going to ask me for the URL, head back to YouTube, copy the URL, paste it in. Now this one would be more news opinion. What's the hook? The RAM shortages. We all know AI data centers are buying all the VRAM and that's hurting consumers. Don't need to put that much detail, but that's what the hook is. So we'll submit that one and then we'll do one more. So we've got one here, the Windows 11 disaster that's killing Microsoft by Moon. So this guy's got quite a lot of subscribers, a lot of likes, looks interesting. This time I'll use my little quick add shortcut here, run quick add, I'm gonna scroll all the way down, use my quick commands, and I'm going to select my new discovery, and that loads the template quick add command, paste in the title, hit okay. It's going to ask me for the URL, so I'll go grab that from YouTube, paste that in. This one is going to be news opinion as well. The hook is Microsoft Read and how it's causing inshitification. We'll hit submit on that one. All right, so now we've got four new discoveries today that we've put into Obsidian. So let's go have a look now at the new content discovery system workspace. So I can use my manage workspace layout shortcut here, but I like to use the workspace plus community plugin. And then I'm gonna go up and select content discovery system. So that's going to load my discoveries folder. And this one just lives inside my vault under discoveries 
properties here. You can see all the discoveries that I've captured. So we'll close the sidebar there. So you see, we've got also got a button here to enter a new discovery. So I could have used that one as well. Now you'll notice I've got a review queue as my first call out here. So I can hide that and I can look at any other statuses here. So I could go all discoveries. I'm just focusing on the to review. So this could be a daily review or a weekly review it's whenever you get time. So let's have a look at some that we did today. You can see the date here, 16th. So we've got four from today. So we'll start with the Windows 11 disaster. Hit the middle mouse button and you can see that we've got our YAML properties up the top here. So the date captured. The only tags I'm using are my discoveries, coal mining and captured. So I'm not organizing, I'm not sorting. I'm just capturing the discovery. So I don't need to tag it with Windows or Microsoft or anything at this stage because I don't want it to clutter my vault. I've got the link to YouTube, you know where I've got it from and a little hook here. So all I need to do is go either watch the video if I've got time and decide what the outcome is. So you can see this one is to review. Then I've got a few options here. So I would say that Microsoft Grid and how it's causing inshitification, it's interesting, but it's more of a distraction. So I'm going to mark it as a distraction. And then over here on the left-hand side, you can see that now it appears as a distraction. So if we just close that discovery now, we can see that these are attention leaks. It's interesting, it's disguised as learning, but it's a distraction. So I might watch it when I want to switch my brain off and not do anything productive. So it goes in my distraction discovery view. So once we've done that, we'll do the next one. So the next one was VRAM apocalypse. What should you do? So VRAM shortages, AI data centers are buying all the VRAM. So once again, this is something worth knowing, but I can't change if they produce more VRAM or not. So I would say that this is noise. So I'm going to filter as noise. Now, once again, if I want to go watch that at some stage to switch off my brain, and I can either go down to my noise view here or my distraction view, but it's not going to help me with my mood or getting things done. So that's that one reviewed. So let's have a look at something a little bit more useful. So I've got one here, Vault Showcase My Journal Vault. So we'll open up that one. So we can go over to Reddit and explore this one more. And if we like what we see, then we can start creating a note. So capture, organize, distill, express. But for now, I just want to put it in my signal list. So I've got a signal here. So these are things that I should be focusing on, things that I should be making notes about. So they go in the good stuff, which is the signal. So we can sort that one in there. So if you want to just review and then pursue the signals later, then that works. Or you can just pursue them as you go. But I think just putting them in a list and then doing it all later is a little bit more fun because then you've got to try get the database sitting at zero. You don't want like hundreds of items in the good stuff and you haven't acted on it. All right, so the next one is how to give Claude unlimited memory without writing code. So I think that one was a bit of a signal as well. So we'll add that one to our signal list. Hidden rollout formula in Obsidian Bases. So this was yesterday. So this is how to do rollups in Obsidian Bases. Someday that could be useful to me. So I'll put it in someday. And then that one goes down to someday here. So someday I might need to roll up. The way I'm sort of looking at Obsidian Bases is the team still actively working on it. So there's no point of learning how to write formulas until they update or add new features. That could be a someday and if I need it, I know where it is. So we've got three more to review. So we've got agent client plugin. So that's like an AI community plugin inside of Obsidian. That's a someday as well. It's not something I'm actively using, but I'm keeping an eye on it. And then we've got two more to review. So we've got WTF Anthropic. So this one we're talking about Anthropic making changes to third-party coding apps with Claude subscriptions. So that one is probably a distraction. It's interesting, could be a signal, but I think it's more of a rant. So it could, I'm just going to mark it as a distraction. And then the last one is replacing my NADM workflow with Lord Code Skills. Now I won't be replacing any of my NADM workflows with Claud Code, but I'll use them both side by side. I think that one could be a signal or maybe a someday. 
So we'll just throw it there. Okay, so now we've got four signals to act on. So we could go pursue these four content discoveries and start capturing, organizing, distilling, and expressing, see where they lead, and our review queue is clear. So in the next part of the video, we'll take a look under the hood and see how this new content discovery system works. So this is how I used to capture content before using Obsidian. I'd scatter everything across tools outside of my daily workflow. So my Notion Media Vault with 32 resources I completely forgot about. We can see I've got a whole bunch of media from online courses to YouTube videos and articles. And this was really a capture everything vault. So this included everything that was a distraction or noise. And then I'd just filter it down to video or online course. And I'd have a to do list as well. And then I would just tag it or give it a status and a rating at the end, but there was no way to really filter out distractions. Another tool I used was raindrop.io, and this was just a replacement for my Chrome favorites. So this was a place to just quickly capture a website or a YouTube video or something I wanted to come back to later. Now everything's beautifully organized here, but I never really open it because I'm always in Obsidian. That's similar to my Chrome bookmarks. I do use those sometimes, but they're not for content discoveries. So I guess the bottom line is when I moved to Obsidian, most of these tools disappeared from my life because they weren't part of my daily workflow. So the content kind of died inside of Notion, Braindrop, Chrome, or Apple Notes, unless I bought it into Obsidian at some stage. So great for collecting, but pretty useless for actually taking action on the discovery. So let's go through how the new content discovery system works. So we'll expand the left pane and we'll go down to our vault here. And I'm going to expand the vault and expand discoveries. So you can see I've got all my discovery notes inside here. The discovery folder is a folder note. So if we open up that, you'll notice that this is the content discovery system. And then all I've got is a few callouts with a base view inside. If we have a look at the YAML properties. We've just got the date modified and a link to what's a content discovery note. So we'll come down and we'll open up that one got some YAML properties set for this note. And this is just a reminder about what the discovery template is and how to use it. So I've put a summary here. Discovery notes are your capture system for interesting content you find online. They live in your vault, so you don't lose track of save resources like you did with Notion, Braindrop, or Apple Notes. Listed the coal mining metaphor, which is think of capturing content like mining for gems, because most captures will be noise or distractions, and that's completely normal. This goal system is designed to help you separate what is valuable from what is wasting your attention. Then I've just defined what the statuses are to review, signal, someday, distraction, noise, applied, and archived. And then I've also put some examples in here as well. So it's more of a reference note in case you forget what the purpose of this goal system is. Right, if we go back to the discovery folder note, I'm going to just jump into the source mode here so you can see this is configured. We've got our YAML properties here, the heading one here. We've got a button here called new discovery, and this is being pulled in by this meta bind discovery menu button. So I'm just gonna copy control O and we'll open that up. Now you can see it's empty, but if we jump into the source view, we can see that we have our meta bind buttons inside there. So this one is the ID new discovery, and we can see the button here, new discovery. So this is linking to the command quick add choice, this one here. So quick add is a community plugin. So if we go to our settings here, we scroll down to quick add. You'll notice I've got a lot of quick add settings. I'm going to scroll down and I'm just interested in my quick commands here. 
You can see I've got a power icon and that gives me access to this quick add inside the command palette. If you're not familiar with quick add, I have made a video on how it works. And if we click our cog wheel here, we can see that it's pulling in the new discovery template and then it's placing any new discoveries in the folder vault discoveries. So let's go have a look at this new discovery template here. I'll just highlight that one. Hit Control O, paste in, open up my new discovery template. So this quick add choice is a button here, which is being pulled in from the Metabine embed. So this button gets delivered here and then it calls the quick add template, which is the new discovery template on the right hand side here. Now you notice I've got some weird syntax here. So this is a modal form template and I've also done a video on how modal forms are made inside of Obsidian. So if you haven't seen that one, go check that one out. So we've got our little modal form syntax here. So it's grabbing the new discovery modal form. If I hit control P, type in modal, we're going to go into manage forms. And then I'm gonna scroll all the way down to my new discovery form here. I can preview it and there's my form there. All I want to do is I want to hit edit and have a look what it looks like. So I've got the form name, which is new discovery. So that gets pulled in here. The title of the form, new content discovery. Then I just specify what fields. So the required field is the URL. Then I've got the medium type, which is a select. And then I've got all my medium types predefined inside my modal form. And then I scroll down and I've got my content purpose. And these also become YAML properties. So this here gets pulled into here as a YAML property. That's so why we've got this little block of code here. And then the last one is hook. What is the hook, which is a text area. Now the last component is this discoveries link here, which goes back to the discoveries folder note. And that's this Metabine button here. So if we have a look in the source code of here, we can see there's quite a lot going on there. So I've got the discoveries and the new discovery buttons, which are these two here. And I've also got what is the hook with a text area placeholder, which inputs your hook into the hook YAML properties up the top here. And then I've also got this input discovery status, and this is being referenced from Metabine templates. So if I go into my settings again, scroll down to Metabine, and I go into my input field templates, you can see I've got my discovery status template here called discovery status. And then that's a global input inline select that I can select here under discovery status. All right, so finally we'll look at the base here. So I'll go into the discovery base. We'll just turn the source code off for this one. So you can see I've got two review signal distractions, all discoveries, noise, someday, and archive. So we've got all our views that we see on the discovery folder note here. Then I've just got a filter with the discovery status is and the status. So this one is to review. And then I've got where the discovery is not. And then I'm filtering any notes out that I don't want to show here. And I've also got all views up here where folder contains vault discoveries. So I'm only looking inside of here with this status here. If we look at signal, you can see we've got our signals there. We've still got our old view, but then we've also got our discovery status is signal and we're filtering out this note here. So I've just simply duplicated each view and then just changed the status. And then from there, we bring them in as views by putting the name of the base pound and then the name of our view. So to hide these callouts, what I've done is I've put a little plus and minus. So minus hides the callout and whereas plus shows the call out. And by doing that, it just stops me having to endlessly scroll if there were lots of, so like say you had all your discoveries there, you'd have to endlessly scroll through all your discoveries. So if you want to build this yourself, then that's a sneak peek on how I've set up this system. If you'd rather not spend a few hours troubleshooting setting this up, I've packaged it as a complete system on my Ko-Fi page. So you'll get a pre-configured modal form templates with all the bases view. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.